Hey, 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 happy day 733 of What She Up To Now. She's Sharon Hornellstrom, also known as Pajama Grandma. Do you throw your weight around? I was thinking about this today because I was talking about it in my Supersize Your Business segment and I actually thought about, do I throw my weight around? I don't really throw my weight around now, but I definitely threw my weight around in the past. Now, to throw your weight around means, of course, to, to exercise or exert pressure or influence in a negative way. So. I don't think, or in a mean way, um, or to bully, or to dominate, or to use your position power in a way that's um, forceful, or rough, or tough, or um, a little bit more, usually applied to bigger people, much bigger people than me. So somebody my size is probably not going to be considered rough or tumbly or gangstery. Um, so I, it's hard for me to throw my weight around. Although there was a rumor in the high school when my son was in high school that my husband and I were in the mob, which is, if you know me and my husband, is freaking hilarious. I've never laughed so hard in my life than when one of my son's friends said that. I'm like, what? What on earth are you freaking talking about? I think it was because we had an Italian food business. I don't know. And we were in real estate and other businesses. I don't know. But it was funny. So I guess maybe I was considered a little gangster in my day. But now I'm older and wiser and pretty much don't throw my weight around. I like to influence and share and be kind and highlight other things and other stories and, and other ways of looking at things, but I don't think, I don't exert pressure or throw my weight around. Um, I don't think since I left corporate America, which in corporate America I was a bossy boss because I was in a regulatory part of the organization. I worked in quality and sanitation and um, quality's job is pretty much to oversee how everybody does everything and how it interacts and how it impacts not only our end customer, but our internal customers between departments. In manufacturing, it's a really big deal. Uh, and especially when it involves product safety and safety and things that could negatively impact human beings. I was in the, the food industry a lot of my experience, and to me, people need to be protected from mistakes or contamination or all kinds of things that can happen in an environment where you're producing things that people actually consume. And it's a highly regulated, industries. The industries are highly regulated. We've got Department of Agriculture, USDA, OSHA, FDA, um, IRS, the governments, and all different levels of compliance or of regulation. And it's it's for a reason. I used to kind of get frustrated with it sometimes because there's a lot to know. It's kind of like the tax code, right? We'll take the tax code times 10 and you're in the food industry dealing with all the rules and regulations that apply to that. I believe there's more regulated industries. I think probably the financial industry. I don't know that much about it. Have not been in that industry. Um, but there's a lot of industries that are, are, are very regulated. Um, but I don't know if there's maybe maybe pharmaceuticals is more regulated. No, I don't think so because you got the FDA. Uh, well, anyway. Um, so throwing your weight around. And I remembered this morning about... Um, when I was in high school, when I was more egotistical and I was the editor of the paper, I threw my weight around. I used to have this weird practice of I'd carry around a tub of markers and when people would listen to me, I'd whip markers at them. Usually I didn't hit them, but I would whiz it by their head. That's back when my eyes were good, so I was a better shot, but I'd whiz it by them and, and that would get their attention, you know. And so that would be an example. That would be an example of um, throwing my weight around even though I was small. I was using my position power to get people to pay attention, get people to do what I wanted, get people to listen. Um, famous people do it all the time, right? They become spokespeople for different brands or for politicians or for causes that they're using their influence and their power and their position and their fame to influence others. Now, if they do that in a positive way, great. If they do that in a mean way, not so great. You know, think of the political campaigns that have been going on and will, I'm sure this next year go or actually this year be rampant with the presidential election coming up. Um, you know it's gonna get nasty and it's gonna involve famous people from Hollywood that have no business because their opinion isn't any more important than yours or mine spewing out hate and negativity and meanness and lies that they think are true just to force other people to, to have the same opinion as them. We see this in politics right now really, really in a negative way where political parties are trying to force and dominate and push their opinions on everyone. And it's, it's really uncomfortable. How do you feel when you are um, bossed around or, or roughed up, even emotionally, by 
somebody else. How, it's, it's bullying, right? How do you feel when you're bullied? Almost all of us have either experienced a, a bad boss or a bully or a bad relationship or a controlling relationship or something in which we were involved that someone was throwing their weight around. And maybe they weren't doing it to you, but they were... I remember my daughter in school would always come home and she'd be upset and I'd be like, oh my God, what happened at school? And it wouldn't be about her. The teacher had done something to someone else in the class and it really, really upset her. Um, I remember several occasions that happened. So it might not even be people throwing their weight at you that has a negative emotional or impact on you. It might be how someone is treating other people. Uh, so thinking a lot about throwing your weight around and have I done that in the past? Yes, guilty. I'm really guilty and not not super mean way guilty but I'm guilty of that I mean I'm guilty of um, wanting people to do things because I believed that it was the right way to go the right thing to do and sometimes that makes us close-minded and we don't open ourselves up to other possibilities and we don't always listen to people and the possibilities and the value that they bring to the table listening is a continually improving skill for me personally I come from a family of, of interrupters, I call us. We're all the interrupters. So that's kind of a cool name for a group, interrupters. We gotta be disruptors and interrupters, right? Interrupters in a positive way for positive change in the world. So thinking about throwing your weight around, throwing my weight around, and people that throw their weight around at me. There aren't very many of those people in my life anymore. I, I pretty much, I'm not impressed by fame. I'm not impressed by um, fortune. I'm not impressed by politics for or religion or people in different positions that think they're better than other people. I personally think that all human beings are inherently priceless and, and there's no way to put a value on human beings and that at our core we are all priceless. Now some of us exude um, airs of superiority or entitlement that make me just kind of want to hurl but <laughs> uh, that's that's just the way it is and, and now the older I get the more I see through the the crap and the nonsense and the the false bravado and the ego because it is all ego the only reason we want to throw our weight around is to make ourselves feel better about ourselves which all comes from the ego right we want to have that feeling of superiority and feel like well we're not as bad as that person we're we're not maybe we're not as good as this this top star in in our realm or that we see to aspire to but we're certainly better than all of these people I don't know why there's this human tendency to rank ourselves and compare ourselves to others, but it's super duper unhealthy. Because guess what? You can't compare yourself to anyone else. We're all unique and special and totally different. We have totally different experiences, totally different ways of looking at the world. And so comparing ourselves to others is just an exercise in futility. So thinking about throwing my weight around, thinking about the fun challenge, 365 day challenge, day 24 today, um, all about Things that make you laugh so hard, stuff comes out of your nose, like milk or pop or coffee or whatever you're drinking, bulletproof coffee this morning. So um, that's going really well. We're going to do the whole year. The whole year is all about having more fun this year, starting with my Mickey Mouse rope and my bulletproof coffee. I'm so excited. I found bulletproof coffee at Sam's yesterday, and I had been missing it, but I wasn't missing it enough to figure out how to find it and, and just order it. and. and moving and changing houses and stuff just made it easy to to stop that yummy habit now i'm like ooh, i can have my yummy habit and i don't have to stress about it i can just run to sam's and pick up a, a container of the octane oil never like ghee anyway um live thrive challenge is monday starting monday and today i'm working on the details of it because i'm totally revamping what i thought i was going to do <laughs> with it and i'm not i mean it's still Say, I'm, I'm not revamping it, I'm just simplifying it, clarifying it, and breaking it down in a much easier framework and form or framework and format than I was going to do before. I was going to do 10 days, all the details, and I realized that that's not what we need. That's not what people need if they're just wanting to know how to do a challenge for themselves or for other people. What do you need? How do you need to do it? How, it it's not, it's it's so hard to have to go out and figure out all of these things on our own it's so easy if somebody says hey do step one step two step three step four step five boom you've got it done it's so much easier than going out and stressing and struggling and trying to figure out all the pieces all the components on your own now how do I know that because I've done that on almost everything I've ever done in my life I instead of 
modeling and finding somebody that's already doing what I want to do, I would just have to figure out how to do it myself, right? Stupid, but I learned a lot. And one of the things I've learned over decades of doing challenges is, guess what? There is a process, there's a process for everything we do. Every emotion we feel, everything that we do, everything that we think, everything we feel, all this, the way we talk, everything has got a process and it's our process. And once we understand how we do things, how we process, I actually learned this, I think, or, or um, learned about how to understand it from Tony Robbins decades ago. He talked about every emotion we choose to feel, we go through a series of things that cause us to experience and feel that emotion. So if I want to feel depressed, there's all kinds of things I have to go through to, and there, that I'm already doing automatically, but I want to identify what those are in order to feel depressed. Now, a long, long time ago, I just said, depression is not even a, an option for me. In my early 20s, I had some major health challenges and I learned that I had to not let depression be an option for me. And so I defined and changed the way I personally went through the steps to and what I had to do to feel depressed. And I made it so hard that I, it's impossible for me to feel that way, to actually get to depression. I can feel bummed out. I can feel pissed off. I can be upset about something. But for me to get depressed, I've got so many rules and regulations in my mind that I built up, so many steps I have to go through that I can never get there. Oh. And you can do that with any emotion. You can do that with anything. So I wanted to make it, here's the process. Here's the, here's my process for handling a challenge. Each and every time I'm faced with a challenge or an opportunity or an obstacle or a problem, this is exactly what I do. This is how I do it. Now, when I'm leading other people through getting a result that they want, which is a challenge or a way to take advantage of an opportunity, versus looking at it as it's a problem. I go through the same process, the same framework every single time. And I've streamlined it to the point where I can identify a challenge in my life. I can decide I'm changing it and commit to changing it now. And I can almost change it immediately. But most of us can't do that with, with other things, especially with big things. Not because we can't, because we can change anything instantly. I love Mel Robbins' 54321 blast off because it, it identifies within five seconds or less you can change anything that you want. We can instantly change. The trick is we have to commit and decide that there's no going back from making that decision. Unfortunately, our brains and our subconscious get and our ego gets involved and throws all kinds of crap at us that tries to prevent us from changing because our ego and our subconscious wants to always keep us the same, right? If our ego was in charge, we'd all be little robots doing the same thing that we'd always done just the definition of insanity, right? Expecting different results. Um, so working on the details today of the Live Thrive Challenge, which is starting Monday, come heck or high water, um, <clears throat> trying to decide if I want to do it on LinkedIn in a LinkedIn group as well. I've got a LinkedIn group set up. I always, I've always done them in Facebook. I've done them in YouTube. I've done them um, in different places, but I've never done a challenge on LinkedIn so I'm thinking it might be fun I'll, I'll record it on Facebook because Facebook is so freaking easy and every almost everybody's on Facebook there's two and a half billion people on Facebook so it's a really easy platform to teach it on but you can do it on any platform that works for you um, like I said I've done YouTube I've done um, Facebook but I've never done LinkedIn I, I don't know how you would pull off a, a, a challenge on some of these platforms you know Twitter you got 140 characters how you can do that but you can attract your videos so I probably could and I do share the videos on all these platforms but I don't do them live um, but I'm thinking it would be kind of fun to do a LinkedIn component this time so I haven't 100% committed to myself to doing that yet got the page set up and things and the foundational things but for sure it'll be on Facebook because Facebook is so easy <clears throat> So working out the details of that, and my amazing little four-year-old granddaughter will be here soon. So I am going to sign off. Have an absolutely awesome day. If I can help you in any way, ask, 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 and hit me up in the comments below. Again, if I don't know the answer, I will point you in the direction of where you can get it or who can help you find it. Um, otherwise, if I know it, I'll just give you the answer. I mean, right? Why make it hard? And and the reason I do that and the reason I say that is because for decades it has been 
so hard for me to ask as a as a human being, as a, a mom, as a wife, as a business owner in lots of different industries, if I struggle with asking, what what happens to the rest of us? I mean, we all struggle for ask to ask a question. And sometimes all we need is one question, one question answered, and it opens the floodgates to everything that we want. At least that's what happened to me, and so I want to always return that favor and be available to people if they have a question. Be available to you if you have a question. That's it. Have an absolutely amazing day. I, of course, will be back here tomorrow journaling what I'm doing as I transition from the brick and mortar offline world of business to the online world of business. And I do have some good news, but I don't want to jinx it, so I will see you tomorrow.